Hello and welcome back to some more of the Cherokee campaign. Last time we had a big battle with the Pueblo nations when they came to meet our invading army. We managed to win that battle, but far to the north, the French decided to invade. Fortunately, I'd left some forces behind just in case this happened, and they actually came in very useful and were able to stop the French invading force. And we went on to completely take all of the Pueblo nations' lands, but we'll now have to sit there for a long time because they're not happy about it for now. We're switching back up north to look at this war with France. After their initial invasion force was defeated, there was another smaller one just hanging around over here. So I'm going to go take a look. I almost fought this battle, but eventually decided that's probably okay to auto resolve. And indeed, it seemed to be okay or okay enough. So with that done, the French are now kicked back out of our territory. Actually, I think that unit up at the top right might be standing just in our territory. But anyway, they're gone effectively. And now it's time to think can we counterattack in any way? A problem we're facing here is that the presence of the French fleet stops us from making the river crossing near our army, so we actually have to go all the way to the west in order to advance towards the French settlements, so that's not too useful for us. Seeing that, I decided it's probably not worth going on the offensive because who knows what the French will have there by the time we actually arrive. We can't make an instant counter-attack. Here though, the British come with a very interesting deal. First, they want military alliance. Now that's pretty handy for being at war with the French. We'll probably have to scrap that once we turn our sights on the 13 colonies, but for now that's pretty good. And more importantly than that, they want to do a region trade. They want to swap Rupert's Land for Florida. Rupert's Land is the place up in the Arctic Circle, and it's actually worth a tiny bit more money than Florida and it's much easier to defend, even though it actually borders the French territories a tiny bit. It's so isolated that really we don't need a garrison to hold that place at all. So it's a nice tactical trade, and on top of that they're going to give us a couple of technologies in the deal. So I ended up saying yes, we will go ahead with that and the deal is made. So we are now working with the British, hopefully they'll help us against the French at some point, that would be nice. And we now don't have to defend Florida, so that's going to free up some troops for us as well. The French are just wandering about, nothing that looks like a concerted attack coming in right now, so it seems we're safe for the current turn. There's also one other thing to consider, and that is the Spanish fleet that was preparing to attack Florida, or at least we presumed it was. Now, that's going to be Britain's problem and not ours, so we can ignore it going forwards. So here's the territory we got in the deal. As I said, it's a tiny bit better than Florida, although it will lose all its value because natives ruling it screws everything up. We'll have to destroy a few buildings to convert them over to the native style so that we can then upgrade them further. We also get a new trading port, but we actually can't use it because you're not allowed to trade through a port that's not your capital port while the capital port is under siege, which it currently is. So that's not actually going to do us any good. Here are the forces who are freed up by us not having to defend Florida, and they can come right up to join the French front. We probably won't need them over here where we've got this army sitting in Texas. It's going to be sitting there for a long time while the gigantic resistance to invaders fades away. So we'll just ignore them and pull all of our forces up to fight with France. The British, seeing that I was willing to agree to deals, perhaps come along with this new deal. This time they want to swap some islands for some of the territory on the mainland. While we might actually gain economically from doing that, it would be so strategically annoying that we're going to ignore that deal. Now a small French force manages to run much further than expected and come all the way around to this undefended settlement, the same one they tried to attack last time. And now we're in a bit of trouble. As you can see, we've only got our two garrison units. This was another battle where I almost went ahead and fought it to see what sort of damage we could do to the enemy. But then immediately after thinking about that, I just thought, no, we'll auto resolve. Since we're in a situation where our counterattack will definitely be able to take that place back, it doesn't really help to do added damage to the enemy force. I say that. It would be the right thing to do in pure game logic, but it's not worth the real lifetime investment, basically. So we see other French units moving about the place, but nothing too big. So we're going to come back and just focus on retaking our territory. I can't move all of my units over right away because the units that are hanging around might come down and try something. So I'm going to leave a garrison behind to help out in case that happens. I thought we probably don't need many units, so I'm going to take as much stuff as possible over to the west. 
And our force looks like it's going to be pretty superior to what the French have there, so we'll get the place back soon enough. Now, a suspicious death happens that doesn't help out with our mission. The leader of this army was killed, supposedly, by a French agent, though we can't see them. So that's pretty inconvenient. Still, we'll have to continue on. We don't have much choice or any way we can react to that in particular, especially since we can't go after the agent. I lay siege to the settlement, but there are actually reinforcements off to the west in the fog of war who now appear, so it's going to be a bit harder than it first looked. Since a lot of the French units up to the northeast seem to have gone back and concentrated up around Montreal, I thought we're probably safe to put everything in the area into this attack to make it easier. I'm also still slowly approaching with our reinforcements from the south, although they won't make it in time, unfortunately. The French both move out an army that seems to be coming to support and then sally. So we'll need to win this sally battle and then gather up to fight the new French army that's approaching. Fortunately, because the enemy are sallying, those mortars they brought should be avoidable if we go and sit at the back of the map as usual. As it happened, the mortar crews posed no threat at all because they actually went for the classic charging ahead of the army strategy. Now we're just going to shoot them with the debut of our native musketman unit. This range unit is actually pretty good and it's probably better than line infantry because the whole unit can fire at once even without any technologies. As for these mortar crews, they're going to have a pretty bad time at the hands of those musket attacks and both of them decide they're not going to bother finishing that charge in the end. Probably the right call there. Now another advantage that comes from having a ranged unit is that we can deal with the enemy's ranged cav. Instead of just taking their shots and trying to somehow get them into melee, we can just easily shoot them down as they approach and drive that unit off. So it is handy, I think, to have at least a couple of these units around. The enemy happen to have the same units, the auxiliary version, and of course plenty of line infantry who all together will have the ranged advantage over our two units. So we probably don't want to have an exclusively ranged ranged battle going on here, even though our units are pretty decent. If anything, it would be a waste of our melee units to have them on the field if we're just going to shoot at the enemy. So I am going to try and charge at them. Not an ideal scenario in terms of the direction, since we're just charging the front of the enemy. We are going to get shot and we are going to take morale shocks, but in this case we're getting away with it. I've got my cavalry to go and take out some militia who are hanging around at the back. No problem at all to take down that low power unit and then move on to attack other things, of course. And here we go. Our charge right at the enemy's front line was successful. And they don't have that much in the way of infantry. So once the enemy are charged from the front, other units can simply sneak around the flanks and do their thing. We've also got more cav coming around on the right who can go for the enemy, enemy's general who is completely isolated at the back. We'll say goodbye to him pretty quickly. Then our infantry just complete the surrounding of the enemy units and they'll be guaranteed to be destroyed, no escape. So hopefully if we kill enough of them, we will be able to take the settlement off them, basically. We want to kill the entire enemy army if we can. And we got almost all of them. A couple of guys survived, but the game generously did give us the settlement in the end. So that all went exactly to plan. The French are driven back. And there we see that Spanish army finally started coming towards the mainland, but got driven back. I think the British main fleet was in the Bahamas and defeated their navy and sent them back, which caused them to retreat. So that's nice. Not that we have to care about that scenario, as I said. So now the French have us in a slightly annoying situation. They have some forces nearby, and it's hard to tell which settlement they'll go for. They could attack either of our two settlements up here, so I have to split my force and defend both. So the army at both isn't really big enough to absolutely guarantee our safety. It's pretty annoying. In the end, they actually went for a secret third option that I wasn't even anticipating. We saw their army march west there, but it's not coming for the western of our two settlements. It's actually going somewhere else. At the same time, the Spanish main fleet seemed to appear down in South America. So unfortunately, we are not going to be able to keep our trade ships down here, even though they weren't doing anything. Yeah, one day we might have got our trade back and that could have been useful, but now they are unfortunately gone. So there is the French army. It's going over here by the looks of things. We have no defenses at all against such a move. So that's a pretty good idea. 
I can try to stop them by attacking them with this small force, but it may not be enough to actually bring that army down, especially with its decent artillery and its use of line infantry above militia. However, I realize there's one other thing I can do to try and stop them, and that is to divert my reinforcements to go west and get into reinforcement range of that settlement. Now, even if they continue west or double back and go east, we have a pretty decent chance of defending against them, especially because a couple of extra units would be thrown in as a garrison. So with that move made, I just had to wait and see what it was they did. We see they do continue going to the west, but fortunately for us, they couldn't attack the settlement this turn, so that gives us some additional options. I'd also started recruiting a unit in this settlement, so that means our forces in the area is going to be a tiny bit stronger there. With that army over there, I started thinking we might be able to pull some shenanigans because our forces over here in the east aren't really under much pressure from the local French. So I can move out and do some kind of offensive maneuver. And now that the French army has passed by and gone over to the west, this small force here can actually go behind it and start marching up the main road into French territory without being resisted. I wanted to see if I could hide this army, so I'm going to move it into the trees. I don't really know how the mechanics for hiding armies work in Empire, and I'm pretty yes. sure that didn't hide it, <laughs> but that was an effort at doing so. Now the French army has to decide whether it will continue its attack on our newly garrisoned settlement, or go back to try and stop me, presuming it could see my army there, and I think it could, and indeed it did, go back. So that's the ideal scenario for us actually, because with the rest of the French stuff too far away to really take part or influence our, mo our movements in this area, we can bring everything together and just go at this French army from all sides with our reinforcements from the west and the original armies guarding the area. So now this will be ideal. I was a bit cautious about moving around because the enemy could do an interception battle if I moved any one of the armies too close to the enemy too early and then I wouldn't get my advantage of numbers. In the end, we got the scenario we wanted where everything is going to join together and attack at once. I think once the enemy army is inside one of your zones of controls, it can't do interception battles, so you become safe to move smaller units up to help with the fight. But anyway, here's the thing we ended up with. We're attacking from two sides with a pretty sizable force. I thought we'd have more of an advantage on that balance bar, but apparently not. Perhaps the enemy's quality artillery is influencing that. We're going to have to fight this one. First priority is not getting shot by their artillery. You can see they're setting it up as the battle starts. And I'm just going to run my cavalry to the edge of the map, out of the arc of fire of those artillery. And that does the job. It causes them to put it back onto the horses to move it around. Of course, they can't actually see any of my infantry because it's all hidden in the open. While that's been going on, my reinforcements have gradually been arriving. You can see they've got their annoying default orders to go stand in the middle of the map. We're going to come up with something a bit better and get some battle lines going, ready to sandwich the enemy, although they're making it a tiny bit hard. They actually moved out of the centre of the map as they were pursuing my original two cavalry units. Then they saw my reinforcement cab and turned around and stopped. And essentially they ended up in a position where we couldn't attack them from both sides. It was going to be a frontal and flank attack or something like that. That'll have to do. At this point in the battle, I think they started to see my units. One unit of line infantry there turning off to face us. And these cavalry certainly found my reinforcements, although they didn't want to attack them. It looks like there they tried to run through them. That didn't count as a charge, so we didn't just lose all our men when they ran into us, which was pretty nice. Over here, nothing particularly fancy going to be going on. We're just going to run at the enemy's flank with tons of units, hope to break through the one unit that's guarding that flank and then get some nice attacks on everything else. Their howitzers there dropping some incendiary shells onto my advancing cavalry. A bit nasty, almost actually routing one of my cav units for a moment, but soon they'll be in position to take their revenge. Our big attack from our reinforcements, which became the main attack effectively since the enemy army turned around, just hits all of their units from the front and locks them down, while another unit here coming in from the flank disables all of those artillery, so no more hassle from them. Our cavalry can make rear attacks on enemy units that are absorbed looking at other things going on. In some cases though, like right here, I'm probably charging through the enemy and into my own men, inflicting friendly fire. 
Still, not a huge deal. It's having the desired effect in that enemies are routing and really everything starts routing at about this point. You can see enemy units going all over the place. Those enemy cav there inflicted quite a lot of damage on my unit once they got bogged down into a melee, but we won in the end. And in the center somewhere here is the enemy's commander and his cavalry. He gets killed at about this point and that starts a chain route. Here's the result then. The enemy army is just gone. A few survivors, but they are going to be deleted. And the casualties on our side, not too bad. We're still ready to fight. And with that army die? gone, this presents the opportunity for us to unite these two armies into an offensive force that should have a decent chance of actually making a successful campaign against the French territories. So here we are in the next turn, and I'm going to do exactly that. We'll just march to the northeast with our combined army, now getting some replenishment, so by the time it arrives, it should be in a stronger position. Although the French reacted by sending quite a few of the units down the road to meet us, and that's probably for the best, because it means the guys left behind won't be involved in the ensuing battle. So we'll just walk right into this army. I think we have a decent chance against it. The balance bar somewhat even, maybe a small advantage for us there. But still, we have a big numerical advantage. We can easily surround this army. And as long as we're careful about things like the artillery, we should be able to wipe it aside. So here we are sneaking across the fields towards the French position. Their artillery can't see us as we advance, so it's just doing nothing right now. They ended up moving it about as I advanced. I think they could see my cavalry and were considering firing at it. The cav is just going around to the enemy's flanks, ready to attack once the main infantry body distracts the enemy. Once we got a bit closer, we discovered some native gunners isolated from the rest of the force. They started firing at us pretty annoying and I thought we may as well just get started with our charging so we can minimize the amount of time that's going on for. My gunners at the front of my army will have time to their own. The cav and artillery are hanging around over here, both of which take damage and the artillery starts getting out of there. Their main infantry line is forming up further back with my cavalry very close by watching over them. So we charge forwards and we get those gunners first and foremost, hitting them with cavalry from the back and then really quickly ordering those cav to move out of the engagement to hopefully prevent damage to our own units. And since the enemy had routed, we don't really need them to be there. The enemy cav also charge us. They get a pretty good attack. They'll do lots of damage to that unit, but the rest of our army will just walk past them and start going after everything else. Their artillery didn't get out of the way in time, although that said, we also just kind of charge through them here. We can't really take them out once they're limbered up for whatever reason. And they're even just running our guys over there. At least we avoided being fired at very much by the enemy's line infantry. That's what we were really looking for. Although these gunners back here are currently shooting my cav, which is pretty annoying. We were fortunate though in that my cav did then lock them down into melee so it didn't last for long. Other units go to hit these militia hanging around at the back. They won't last for a very long time in that melee. In fact, they're already on the verge of routing. And speaking of being on the verge of routing, as another unit of cav comes in behind the enemy's main position, we can really finish off all of these line infantry. Their morale is just going to drop and drop. Their commander dies at this moment and that triggers a chain route among the rest of the army. Easy peasy. Now we shall slaughter these French forces as they attempt to escape. They really shouldn't have just marched out to try and face us. There's the eventual result. The enemy losing many times more what we did. We're still in great condition to carry on and attack their next settlement as I had hoped. First we'll attack this seminary. This is where the Catholic priests are coming from so we probably don't like that. Even though actually quite a lot of our population is Catholic and we can't really do anything about it because the conversion to animism you get from buildings isn't as effective as the conversion that priests provide and their priests are all over the place. But anyway, as you can see, we did manage to move on and start the siege I was looking for. Thought we'd just go for an auto resolve here because I didn't believe the balance bar essentially. I thought we had a gigantic advantage and the balance bar was messed up, which it sometimes is. We did lose a load of troops, but I thought for the sake of time, we will just allow that and 
take Upper Canada as our new capture from the French. So that's all well and good. The public order situation isn't too bad, so we'll be able to leave soon. And then perhaps go after the real prize in the area, Quebec, a nice, rich and heavily built up French colony. So that will be our mission for the next part.